Nicole here. And today we're going to talk more specifically about LastPass and passwords. And I'm going to bring this slideshow right up here. And we're going to talk about passwords. So the first thing I want to talk to you about are your password requirements. So to have a secure password, this is something that you may already know, you may not know, but it's excellent to, to refresh your memories and um, think about when you're choosing passwords. Because believe it or not, the biggest problem around passwords is not necessarily remembering them, but choosing them in the first place. So when you have a good solid strategy for choosing your passwords, you're going to have less trouble when it comes time to remembering your passwords. And so the first part of this little live is gonna be talking about how to choose a password that is secure and you can remember it. So we'll review the requirements and they are, number one, use a password that you can remember. Uh, number two is make sure your password is somewhere between eight and 15 digit lo digits long. You can have it longer. There are some strategies that recommend this, but we're going to just go with eight to 15 characters. You want to have at least one capital letter, at least one lowercase letter, and a number. And if at all possible, you want to have a special character. Now, more and more special characters are required in probably 98% of the time a special character is allowed, there are still a few very, very old um, login sites that won't let you use a password or a special character. But those accounts are becoming fewer and further between. Um, so it's best to insert a special character into your standard password at all times. It's going to help you be able to remember everything. So I'm going to go ahead and flip through and we're going to talk about how do you create a password pattern, a password system that allows you to remember it. So this password pattern, it um, the password pattern that I recommend for people contains a special word, a special four digit number, your favorite special character and the member site three. So I call this site three. So let's break down these little um, options. Your, your special word, now this special word can be one of those words that they warn you not to ever use. It could be one of your children's names. It could be your pet's name. It could be, you could go off of a, uh, a system of what's the color of the, of the year or um, is it the year of the rat? Is it the year of the donkey? You know, one of those sorts of systems. It could be your, your word of the year that inspires you like gratitude or love or, or grace or health. Um, this word, will be your special word for your your password and i usually capitalize the first letter of this special word next is your special number and this could be the last four of your very first telephone number it could be the very first pin number that you were issued it can although i don't recommend this it can be the year that the, maybe the year you were born the year you got married the year you had your first child whatever you know special year you have that's um, a perfectly acceptable number because the way that we're going to arrange these makes them much more secure than just these individual parts. And then of course, lastly, we've got our special character. You might like the percent sign, you might like the dollar sign, you might like the exclamation point. Um, it doesn't really matter as far as what your special character is going to be. Sometimes I like to use the keystroke above the last number. That's entirely possible, but think through the these three elements your word your number your special character next we're going to talk about a thing called member site three now this is super interesting and this is what makes your password very powerful because this member site three or site three is where you're going to identify the three letters that best describe the website you are on best describe the, the thing you're logging into. So if you're logging into Google, G-O-O -O tends to be a pretty good Google member site three. Microsoft might be M-I-C. Uh, Capital One might be C-A-P. 
and, and in some cases, you might have certain websites where the first three letters aren't the ones that are identifiable, but it, it's more of a, this is the, the, the three letter initials. So whichever one resonates as your three, three letters, that's what you'll use for your member site three. And I always capitalize those three letters. So once we've really narrowed down on, on doing, choosing these things, we're going to choose our pattern. Now, before I get on to our pattern, I'm going to, I've got a worksheet for you, and I'm going to paste this into the comments so that you can print out this worksheet and really dig into what your password pattern is going to be. So this worksheet will help you out. You'll be able to go through this process. So at next, after we've chosen our special word, special number, special character, and we've identified the member site three, which is the only thing that's going to change in your password from website to website. So we can choose our pattern. And this is the super simple one that I like to use is you can choose your word, then your member site three, then your special character, then your number. Or you can do your number, your special character, your word, and then the, and then the site three. Or you could do special character, number, or special site three, and word. It doesn't matter which order you put these in. It only matters that you remember which order you have chosen because that becomes your pattern, your way of doing it, whether you have it, however you have it organized, do that consistently throughout all your passwords. So we've chosen our pattern. Let's get a really quick example here. Let's say we choose the word word for word. Oh, super lame. Choose 5309 for your number. Your special character is the percentage sign and your member site three. Let's say you're going to log into a Luxcentric website. Your password would be word 5309 percentage LUX. And so you can fill in what your different passwords would be for these particular websites. And that's how those passwords would go. So next, now that we've established what password system we want to use, now we know what password to, to use whenever we're logging into something. Whether once we need to reset our password because we've forgotten it, we can choose this pattern to create that password that we want. So the next super powerful tool for remembering passwords is a password manager. The you first thing you want to consider when choosing a password manager is, is it a legitimate password manager? And there's a ton of legitimate ones out there. I prefer LastPass. That's the one I'm most familiar with. That's the one that seems to have the uh, most, uh, the, you get the most for your dollars as of free. LastPass allows you to have a free account and you can have as many passwords as you want. When you decide to pay for LastPass, that gives you some more powerful tools that you can use for sharing and and um, and a couple of other more organizational, bigger company sorts of things that you can do, which you would determine whether or not you want to actually pay for it when you get to that, those levels. Um, other legitimate password managers are OnePassword, Dashline, RoboForm, and KeePass. They're all very um, legitimate password managers. So you want to be careful of who you use because these are very important things that will be keeping your passwords. I also want to reassure you that a password manager like LastPass, their job is to keep your password safe. That is their purpose in life. And so here is LastPass's login page. Its purpose in life is to keep your password safe. So it's kind of like the difference between keeping your money in a bank versus keeping your money in your mattress. It used to be the banks got robbed all the time and that was a super bummer and everybody was very annoyed, annoyed and lost all their things. So then eventually the government stepped in and did some regulations and rules and banks became more secure and now you know fast forward several hundred years later banks are super secure and it's much safer to keep your money there even though it's all pooled together password managers are very similar in the fact that all your passwords are here in this password manager and the password manager it's its responsibility is to keep that safe and a password manager like LastPass has everything encrypted in such a way that only your 
personal master password will open it, which means if you lose your master pa password, it's a super extra bummer. So when you log into a password manager, that password is your most important password. So I'm going to enter my password here. And I use a my password pattern, type it in, not going to share it with you because it's my secret word, secret number, secret special character. But I can tell you that three characters among these are capital L, capital A, capital S. That's the only thing that you can be aware of in my password here. We're going to log in. And logging in to our last pass password or last pass manager, we see all the various entries of what I have logged into and what passwords I have collected over time. Now, this is my test account, so none of this is particularly legitimate. I just want to be able to demonstrate for you. The other thing that you can be aware of with LastPass is they have a browser extension. And if you're curious about browser extensions, um, go ahead and take a look at my previous Fave Live, previous live with Fave Lifestyles, and you'll be able to see I go into more detail about the uh, browser extension. The browser extension with your password manager really, really is the trick to making things super cool and super easy. So I am currently logged into the extension. Notice the little red with the, the red square and the white dots. That's LastPass's extension. I'm going to go ahead and log out. And you'll notice that it turns gray. So that turns gray. You can log into LastPass. Log into LastPass from the website. See here, this log into the website. And it's not going to be attached to your um, your browser necessarily, and it won't read your websites and tell you, you know, and, and pre-fill the password information for you. But if you have it, the extension, and you log into the extension, then it will activate your LastPass um, capabilities throughout your website, throughout your browsing, about the internet. So we're going to log in again. And here I've got my vault, and the vault is what LastPass calls its list of entries. And so here we have a whole bunch of the entries. And so I just want to go ahead and show you a few things um, in this, this entry list. One, you can mark them as favorites. You can organize them according to folders. I don't think I have a whole lot of folders here. And you collapse with these little arrows. See, I've got none on categories. There I go. I have a business folder. I have an email folder. LastPass will organize some of these for, for you. But you have passwords that you can capture. And you also have notes that you can capture. So if you want to make a note of various things, so let's say you want to make a, you know, you might want to create a note in here that is your password pattern. So that you can remember it. You could write it out. You can write a big ton of all kinds of secret stuff in these notes, in these notes, and it keeps it super secure. So we could say word, capital letters, my numbers, and my special character. And we would save it. And then you would have this, um, you would have your, your note. So I'm going to go back to the all items, which shows my list of everything. And we're going to show you how this works with a website. So I'm going to go ahead and here is Canva. And I'm going to just refresh this just for funsies. So notice here in my Canva login, I've got this little square and this little one. This is LastPass reading the website and recognizing that I have a password saved in my LastPass. Now, one little note to be aware of, if you have your Google passwords turned on, you might get another box saying, hey, do you want to enter your password here? And that's something that you'll want to just kind of be aware of because your Google browser can also save passwords, but it's not quite as robust as a, as a program like LastPass. So 
we've got our little one with our little little gray square with the dots and I'm going to click on that little one and it's going to give me my options. See here I've got an entry for Canva in here. Now I have several Canva accounts and this particular one is my Tessa at 5 a.m. coffee can, uh, Canva and I want to do my um, testing at Luxcentric Canva. So we're going to go and do that one. I've got my testing Canva and I'm going to type in a new password. And we'll see whether or not I've actually created a Canva account with testing using my special password pattern. Log in. I think I did this particular one over logging in with Google. So we're going to go ahead and enter my Tessa one. And log in. Oh, it looks like I don't have a Tessa at 5 a.m. coffee. Ooh. I don't have an account with of Tessa at 5amcoffee.com, which is why I can't log into it. So let's go ahead and create a Canva account. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up. I'm going to sign up with email. Tessa. Outlook.com is really the account that I do with Tessa. And we're going to do a password and we're going to do our special word, special number. And log in. Ready associated. So well, that's good times. Well, let's go ahead and log in then. So it looks like I am causing my own troubles. And so this is an excellent example of no matter how good you are with technology, you're going to run into trouble on occasion. So you just simply slow down and you go through the process. So Canva says that I have an email account or a Canva account under Tessa 5 a.m. coffee at outlook.com. But it's not letting me put in my password. So we're going to give it one last try. There we go and log in and it's still not letting us. So we're going to go through the forgot password process. Because this is what you have to get really, really good at when you're dealing with passwords, because you're always going to at some point run into a problem with passwords. So we've sent that email to our Tessa account. And let's see if it'll let us sign into Tessa's email here. Again, I have 101 accounts. There's my Tessa 5 a.m. coffee. And it pre filled the password. And this time it went right in, well, sort of, except Microsoft always wants you to check that little box, even though they'll ask you every single time. There we go. Here's our reset Canva password. Makes sense. I was in the wrong account. So we're going to go ahead and click on our reset Canva password. And reset your password. And we're going to choose our new password. And put the password and LastPass will come over here and say, do you want to add it to LastPass? If it recognizes it already being in there, it will ask you if you want to update. It. So we're going to go ahead and add it. So now that I've added it, I want to share with you just how these look in LastPass. 
So I've added it and we're going to go find it. This is my Canva one. So here I've got my Canva for Tessa at 5 a.m. Coffee at Outlook and Tessa at 5 a.m. Coffee.me, which are sort of two different accounts. But we're going to just go into this entry. And to do that, we're going to click the little tool symbol. And this tool symbol brings us to this screen. Up here is the website that LastPass is going to go to when it logs you in, or it's the website that LastPass is going to read. Whenever you're on Canva, it's going to give you this as an option. So I don't want to necessarily call this particular thing Canva. I want to be a little bit more specific on which one it is. So we're going to say that this one is Tessa's Canva. Because I can edit this field, this main field, any way I want. Last time, it's not going to try to enter it into anything or do anything with it. This one here is the username or usually the email address of whatever the username part is asking for. So you want to have that pre-filled with the appropriate thing. And then, of course, here is the password. And if you forget your password or you just want to look up your password or you don't want it to pre-fill or, or whatever, you can view your password by clicking on this little eyeball and it will show you what your password is and allow you to edit it in case, let's say, you have edited it wrong, you, it's in there wrong, it keeps misbehaving or whatnot, you can edit it there if LastPass doesn't update it properly. And then this notes field, you can fill this up to your heart's content with whatever sort of other information you, you want. Like sometimes they ask for, you know, what was your, your pet's name? What was your mother's maiden name, date of birth? Any of those things can go in this note field and it is also safe and secure. So this is a very long roundabout and super great example of how to deal when passwords misbehave. During this live, I had a ton of password problems which are going to happen no matter how good at technology you are and no matter how good your password system is, you're going to have a few times when it just doesn't want to work. Especially if you have dozens of different accounts with different sorts of passwords and you change your passwords every time you give a password presentation. So, but you can recover from your situations. One last thing before we go in dealing with LastPass is down here, once you set up your LastPass account, it's a good idea to go into the More Options and Advanced and set up a one-time password. And to do this, you'll need to have your current password and set up a few of these so that if you ever get locked out of LastPass, it can be recovered because LastPass is making it harder and harder to recover account in case it gets lost. And often you can recover your particular account with all of the passwords wiped out as a worst case scenario. And so we don't want that to happen to you. So as soon as you set up your LastPass account, go into your one-time passwords and follow the instructions for creating these one-time passwords. And it's gonna have you enter your LastPass password and then click create a one-time password. And then you can also print it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now just to demonstrate. And okie dokie. And here your one-time passwords are listed. And don't worry, I'm going to wipe these out as soon as this live is over because I certainly don't want these public. And then I'll hit print and this will, I'll be able to print out a master copy and put it in my safe somewhere so that I have these passwords in case something goes wrong and I'm not able to access. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to hit cancel on that and I'm going to clear my uh, one-time passwords. And click OK. There, there they go. So sometimes you're going to have to have your fingers work well, too, with your passwords. All right. Well, that's it for now. This was an extra long live. Um, thank you for joining me. Please feel free to enter comments um, into the, the comments field if you have any questions. Thank you all for joining me. And until next time, I will see you all about the Internet.